What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Unscripted, a show that brings you professionals from all walks of life, touching on their backstory, their mindset, and how they navigate through adversity and opposition, while providing you practical tips that might help you on your path. I'm your host, two-time Olympian, Olympic bronze medalist, author, and motivational speaker, Hakeem Haynes. Now, let's get into the episode. This week on the show, I'm joined by 2019 British champion in the 100 meters, 2016 Olympian, and the 2022 Commonwealth Games gold medalist, Adidas athlete, OJ Idubarin, joins me on the show. OJ is no rookie when it comes to dealing with pressure. After bringing her silver medal back to Great Britain at the 2013 World Youth Championships, his path quickly changed and he had no choice but to grow up in a sport that is always fastly moving forward. In this episode, we get into what it's like growing up in North London under a Nigerian household, how he was introduced to track and field and the success that came early with it why he decided not to go to an NCAA institution, and if he regrets that decision. We talk about the culture of sprinting in Great Britain in its current time, things like support system, things like mentors, and so much more. We also talk about the mental battles he's been facing, and OJ shares something he's never openly spoken about before. We talk about how he's dealt with setbacks and discouragement as a youth, and how he deals with it now. We talk about what he expects in this season and some of the challenges he's been facing getting up excitement for training, and he gives us a quick update on how training has been this year. And he leaves us with the word of encouragement for someone coming up behind him. And of course, we get into so much more. The journey hasn't been easy for him by no means. But OJ is someone who is out to prove himself right on how fast he can go on the track, but also the endless possibilities of what he can accomplish away from it. We get into a lot this episode and we dive into a lot of different topics, an insightful conversation that you do not want to miss. But before we go, if you could do me a huge favor and leave a rating and review of the show. This small act goes a long way in moving the podcast forward and will be greatly, greatly appreciated. So with all that being said, enjoy this week's episode with OJ Idubarin. OJ, appreciate you taking the time, man. I know you're heavy on training and things right now, bro, but there's a discussion that we got to have. So appreciate your time, man. I like to get into it, bro. I don't do too much fluff, as you already know. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm big on gratitude, man. I think uh, I think I think when you're in a position where you can be grateful for life, it's hard to look at it from a negative standpoint. So today, give me three things you're grateful for, man. Oh, that's a good one. Um, hmm. Well, being alive, I think it's the first one. <laughs> um, second, I'd probably say being able to do a job that doesn't feel like a job. Mm. Which is which is which is not something everyone gets to do, and I think thirdly, um, I think I'm grateful for um, maybe being in tune with myself. I'd say because not like, again, that's something that's like a that's a hard journey in itself. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm I'm grateful that I'm even on that journey right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So um, I I probably go go with that man. I mean. Where you are right now, bro, I mean, you know, people see the age, but you've been in the sport for decades. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't see that part. But over the years, you get to reflect on certain seasons and to see how far you've came. And while it's still fresh, because you're now in training full swing again, when you reflect on last year, bro, I mean, every athlete, when they go into it, they have an idea of what they think their year is supposed to look like. And when you don't hit those marks, you're like, rah, the year is a wash. But mm. that's the immaturity in the process of progress. So when you look back, man, I mean, 10.07 last year, headwind, flipped that around. That's 9.9, nine, Commonwealth gold in front of the home crowd. Probably certain individual statistics didn't go how you might have wanted it to. But in hindsight, I mean, you made a move last year to trade into America. There was a lot. So when you look back at last year, how it all went, 
What do you think about it? Um, last year was an interesting one because I think coming off the back of 2021, that was meant to be a season where went to Olympics, made the final based off 2019. Obviously, we have yeah, the yeah, pandemic yeah. and then everything gets reset. So I think coming into yeah 2022, I think I just wanted to get back to where I was in 2019 at a bare minimum, mm-hmm. which was like getting back into 10 zeros, being back on teams. And then I did that. So I did actually do what I set out to do. I think Commonwealth was a bonus because I wasn't even meant to run. I wasn't even picked for Commonwealth initially. Mm-hmm. And I got the call last minute and then um, and then ended up getting chucked to the relay last leg, home champs, gold medal, you know, oh my God. Like, but the process to get there was random. So um, that was that was a real good silver lining because it's actually my first international senior medal. Yeah. So I know a lot of the times we can go deep into like the stats. And, but I was like, you know what? Never actually got a medal on the world stage before. So that was big. Um, equally, the athlete in me is kind of like, because of how well I started the season, I definitely expected to run under 10. Mm-hmm. And when that didn't happen, I think, I think um, I sort of started chasing my own tail a bit too much. And I think doing that kind of made me see the progression a bit negatively. And then when the season was done, I took a step back. I was like, actually, you know what? 2021, you were nowhere to be found. You wasn't even competing at all. So it was a good stepping stone. That's I'd, I'd describe it as a stepping stone. And it was like a platform for me to sort of uh, like, remind, like remind myself of, okay, this is the level you're meant to be at. And now I'm like, feel like I'm getting back to normal now. So, um, yeah, it was, it was okay. It went bad. What would you have changed last year? What do you think would have made it better? Mm. Okay. Um, I think from a mental perspective, I was, before the season started, I was really obviously just intrigued in myself. I was focused on the process. And when I ran quick, I think I was very sensitive. So I was kind of just like trying to prove to everyone that I'm the man, I'm back, I'm back. And I think mm. doing that kind of, got me away from you know taking care of the bread and butter of things that's so i probably would have just stayed more focused on me as the year went on and the hype grew and then i would say um probably probably would have said as well training wise probably would have maybe not raced as much and maybe done a bit more training at certain parts of the year so that when i got to the commonwealth and europeans i would have been in that better shape mm-hmm. that's me just nitpicking I think generally, I think just staying in my own process like for the whole season, which is something that I didn't do a good job of. So that's probably what I would have changed. OJ, you're a man who's been who's been kind of pushed into things very early, right? Especially at yeah. the beginning where uh, when you run fast early, and Jody and I would have this conversation all the time and, 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 and previous people before, when you're in a position where you're always being watched and you don't really have time to really develop, for me, at the beginning... There's a certain part in an athlete's career in everybody's lifetime where you're trying to prove people right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're trying to, trying to prove people wrong, right? They're saying this. You're like, no, that's not true. You don't know this. Watch what I'm going to do. Watch what I'm going to do. And I believe motivation comes from different things. But when you're just motivated to prove people wrong, at some point, you're going to get to a wall and a shift has to come. Has that shift came for you? Are you still trying to prove people right, wrong, or are you trying to prove yourself right? Has that shift came for you? I think, yeah, the shift has come. I'm obviously getting older. And I've had enough, like, 10 years in the sport now. So I think, for me, I'm just like... Um, I think I'm not trying to prove people wrong anymore because I feel like, like you said, when you run quick, when you're young, you're on a timer. So you've got about two years before people start saying you're washed and you're not achieving your goals, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I've, already, I've, already, I've already had that. People yeah. writing me off. The new kids are coming up. Uh, he ain't got it, he ain't got it, but... Most people around me know that I should be, and I think I'm the caliber of a nine second athlete. It just hasn't come yet. So with that kind of journey of frustration, I can't really involve other people in it now because it makes it harder. Like I know, like whatever you're criticizing me for, yeah, I know I need to do it too. Trust me. I, I think about it every day. Yeah. So I think now I'm just in a place of, um, I don't know if I can run nine five. I'm at that age now where I'm like, you know, when you're young, you're like, I want to break the world record. I don't know if that's going to happen now, but I've still got goals that I want to hit. And I think now I'm just more focused on um, fulfilling what my potential is and things I've written down to myself. So now when I'm training, yeah, I use the external motivation when I'm feeling low. So people write me off. 
use that, but it's not the thing that's keeping me going. I'm just like, I want to achieve what I know I can do in the sport. And it's funny that you said that, though, because even coming into this season, though last season was good, this is probably the, the most demotivated I've been mm. in my whole career mm-hmm. because I really put a lot of pressure on trying to do something crazy this year. And when I didn't do it, I sat down and I was like, man, like, it's getting a bit, it's getting a bit hard to just be motivated every year. And you know, when you, when you go into a new year, you think this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. <laughs> like I'm tired. I'm tired of saying this is the year because it, it ain't happened yet. And when I say it hasn't happened yet, I mean, running under 10 seconds. Yeah, trying yeah, to make yeah. a global, that's what we all want to do as sprinters, right? So I think now coming into this year, I'm probably the least excited I've ever been. And I'm more so on just the process, like training. Okay. What do I need to do in the gym? How do I need to be in my technical model? What do I need to do in my insurance? What do I need to do at home, mental? Like I'm just focusing on that because I can control it. But all the other stuff, like I've got goals, don't get me wrong, but like I'm not, I'm not emotionally attached to them right now. I don't know if that's a good thing. We'll find out. But right now I'm just like, I just don't have the energy to like psych myself out before I've even got there. I'm just like, you know what? It will come. So just work right now. Man, this that's that's how I know it's going to be a big year, bro. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> because... It, it every and people do this all the time we see it every time a new year comes yo this is gonna be my year it's my year but i'm you get to a point where you're like yo every year is not gonna be your year you know what i'm saying like oh. every year is not going to be a year where you see the results in the areas that you want to see it and sometimes it's a personal development year sometimes it's a working on you year sometimes it's just a year where you got to take your hits and you know in track you take a lot of hits you right win, you lose but, more than you win but you get to a point where you're just like, yo, and I say this all the time when I go and speak and when I talk to people, people ask, I'm like, yo, Bredgen, you got to get out of the sense that all of this process is not fun. Mm-hmm. I remember I remember telling Stu that and, and, and he was just like, yo, what do you mean? I was like, yo, Bredgen, we have blocks right now. And I'm like, I'm bored. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like I'm there. bored because a lot of track and field is so in the mundane and so you have to do other things in order to keep your interest. So just because you may not be motivated at the beginning doesn't mean you won't get there when it's time to get there. But Facts. we got to go back a little bit, OJ, because in order to understand the person, you got to see the makeup of them. Uh, North London, right? Yeah. Nigerian descent. I have people in London. And, and, and UK is an interesting mix. It kind of reminds me of, of Canada because a lot of my family, when they moved, from Jamaica, it either to Canada or to the UK. I'm like, Bridget, why is it just these two spots? Right. Mm-hmm. But what was the dynamics like growing up? Your mom was into fat or is into fashion. And now you're in a melting pot of different cultures, diversity. And it's easy to stray away when you get a little mixed up too much, OJ. So yeah, from sure. a culture standpoint, growing up during those times, man, what was that like? What were you seeing? What was the influences like? Yeah, you know what? Growing up in London is a, is a, is a, is a big privilege, I think, because mm-hmm. you kind of get exposed to life in a way a lot of people don't. Yeah. So for me, it was like, yeah, North London, Edmonton, um, very, very multicultural, like even like down to primary school, secondary school, high school, as you guys say it, um, like every kind of ethnicity, like my whole friendship circles mixed with so many different races and countries. And that was good because I learned different things. But in my it was in my household, yeah, African household, um, very strict, very on the education, typical, you know what I mean? And I think um I I always knew what the right thing was to do in terms mm-hmm. of like, all right, you need you know you need to achieve, you've got to do things the right way, can't cut corners. So it was only when I, I think when I was in school, that's probably when I would deviate from what I knew I should be doing, because you mm-hmm. see other friends doing it, you want to be the cool kid, blah, blah, blah. So it was it was good. Like I like I, I would say, but my parents definitely instilled in me like knowing, okay, you need to do something with your life. Knowing that, you know, enough isn't enough. Like you need to get to a high level in it, whatever it is you're doing. Um, and to be honest with you, it probably influenced the beginning of track because they didn't want me to do track to begin with because my grades weren't my grades were okay, but they weren't as good as it should have been. Yeah. So they were like, look, you got one year. You've got one year to show us you can do something. If not. You need to knuckle down the education. It's like, cool, give me one year. Yeah, I, and within a year, I think I became the fastest teenager in the world at the World Youth. And I was like, okay, well, get off my back. But that kind of <laughs> that kind of back and forth was good because they've always given me a challenge. They've always let me know that, you know, it's not enough. 
it has its cons though because when you do do something good you you want that kind of praise and that acceptance of okay this is enough so sometimes you maybe might not get that as much but you're always going to know that you need to strive to be better and i think that's probably just as i'm getting older myself i feel like that's that probably is influenced by their struggles coming over to the uk you know my dad told me the story about how he came over like, the other day and it was it sounded like a movie like proper struggle to to get over here and and get his feet firmly on the ground and start a family and start a life. It's not easy. It's so for me, it, 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 like, I, I, like maybe I didn't get it when I was younger. I was like, you're so harsh on me. But I'm not actually, you know what? If I came up like that, I would put a lot on my kids because that's my investment. That's what, that's my, that's my prize into the world, what I've given to the world. So I can see how they wouldn't want me to just stray off and just, you know, be useless. So yeah, in a, in a nutshell, strict you know very academic very goal driven um and yeah that's that's what i'd say really well it's when when you sit and you especially if you're an immigrant right you immigrate to a different country and you sit yeah you talk with your parents and you hear their perspective there's a there's a pain inside of them where they just want the best for their children 100%. they don't 100%. always know how to articulate that because it comes off as yo Nine o'clock comes, be in the house, schoolwork from nine to six. I'm like nine to six a.m. I'm like, yo, how am I supposed to sleep? All right. <laughs> but they're not doing it in a way of, I don't want you to have a life. I'm doing it because look, there's more out there for you. But at the 100%. same time, there's certain things in the household that you don't hear. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can maybe count on one hand how many times I've heard my mom. Uh, say I love you or my dad say it as well too it's not that you yeah. don't know they just don't they just don't say it don't say it they don't say it. and that, that has an impact man like I said as I'm getting older I'm trying to figure things out I'm like realizing oh I didn't hear that when I was younger or maybe I maybe that's probably contributed to why I think a certain way or mm-hmm. why I've made certain decisions and you know your, your upbringing and things that you don't get at home those things, yeah, they, they, they play a part and you probably only realise that you get, when you get older and you, you you come into issues of your own, you're like, oh, this is some this is some stuff from back then. And so it's, it's, it's interesting because you can't say it's their fault, but it's just how life is. Do you know what I mean? It's just how life is. When you started track, OJ, it, it, and you started to get the recognition, I mean, you ran you ran, you ran 10 free. What is it, 17-year-old? All right. Yeah, yeah, just at 17, 10 free, yeah. Anybody that runs 10-3 in any type of space, no matter what year it is, no matter what decade it is, like that's rolling, right? Mm. And so now life has changed a little bit because now you're in a sense of it's not it's not like America where you have like the melting, like there's just so much more people and you have the facilities. Bro, America's mad when you think about how much things Crazy, that they have. But when you do it over in the UK, uh, it's highlighted a little bit more. So now life has changed a little bit more in the sense of people know you, people recognize you, and now your yeah. parents are off your back a little bit, but you can get lost in the hype of things where you Facts. don't know who you are. When that started to happen, OJ, who were you? What were you searching? Mm. What were you feeding into? Where was your mm. mind going? Well, I think initially, obviously, like what, say after that season, had a season after when I went 10-1 when I was 18. I yeah. think that was the year where it was like, okay now it's on like all right it's time to go pro blah 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 and i think remember i've gone from like living off mum and dad's allowance every week to then making money on my own female attention blah 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 i think that was defo like i was just very cocky bro to be honest mm. i was just like but like, you don't notice you're doing it at the time because obviously all the guys are doing it everyone around you's got that mentality so you're not thinking it's wrong but i was just like you know i want to be in uh, by, by 21 i want a world record like you say, bowl, and I'm gonna get all this money, and da 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 da. That's that was trajectory was good. So I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. And I think as I got older, I was obviously very attached to external validation. So if that being my peers, right. results, what the brand thinks, what does your image look like, what the women think of you, so that was fueling me a lot. And I, like I said, it was going well. So I had nothing to tell me that I was doing anything wrong. But I think I think I got to um, 2017. That's when things changed because I think it was a first year I didn't get what I set out to achieve. With that being said, you know, I run a PB, I think around 10, 12, 9, 9, 3, Windy, one not under 23 Europeans, but I didn't go to the World Champs and that was the main goal I wanted. And um, 
that was then my confidence was knocked because I was like, well, something that was external that was mm-hmm. fueling me didn't go my way. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to be this guy anymore because it involves, well, if I'm not validated the right way, I, this doesn't feel good. And then people start changing around you. Oh, he's washed up. And I was like, oh, wow, I don't like this. So I think that was the switch. But years before that, it was just boisterous, arrogant, probably quite mean, to be honest. Like, there's people who talk to me now and they're like, you were such a prick when you were younger. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I was. I can't even argue. I was like, yeah, I was. But again, like I said, when you go from nothing to like being known everywhere, if you ain't got the right people around you, that's, that's what's going to happen to you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you get put into situations that you weren't ready for. And not in the sense yeah. of you won't be able to get through it, but you don't have the experience how to navigate through these waters you have not put yourself in. No. But what was it like back then, OJ? Because certain cultures are different, man. Sometimes the OG mm-hmm. see you, right? And you're getting close to maybe what they ran at certain ages. And they're not always helpful, bro. They always look no, at at sometimes. And, mm-hmm. you know, for me... You know, uh, I wanted the help because I, I, I didn't really didn't really want to run track like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Picking certain school. I didn't know how to really navigate through it. And I was wanting some of the help, but you know, I didn't get it. Not that I was mm-hmm. mad at it. I just took it for what it was. But from a mentorship standpoint, especially transitioning from uh, to the pros. Mm-hmm. What is it like in the UK, man, support wise? Like, do those people show you love or is it just kind of like every man for themselves type of mentality? I'll be honest, it's every man for themselves, yeah. and sadly. But you know what it is? It's like, when I was coming up, so say, for example, like I said, the Con 10 one, that's close to the majority of the country, barring yeah. maybe three or four guys who are running 10 or sub 10. So they're like, well, he's, he's on your heels. So they're looking at me, like, not in a good way, because they're like, well, you're going to take my job soon. So <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how to get better. And I think, though, if, if, if they did actually help me at that time, I would have made less mistakes. So say, for example, getting to the point in 2019, 2018, 2019, my two best years. I probably would have had that year in like 2016, 17 if I had had more advice. I'd probably say, like, now I'm getting older, like, because I, because I didn't get that advice, now the guys that's coming up, I would be the one that was giving them advice. They'd be like, yo, I'm struggling. I'm like, yo, do this, do that, da 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 da. da. But then, equally, I see that both sides of it because when I didn't do well in 2021, there was a a bit of disrespect from these youngsters do you know what I mean and like not pay, not say paying homage because I don't like that but like not that respect went there like ah oh, yeah. I don't listen to him he ain't running fast and I felt a bit annoyed at that because I was like well when I was doing well you was listening to what I was saying but now you think it's not it's not needed so then that, now even, I'm not gonna, like, even now like when youngsters want to speak to me I'm, sometimes I'm hesitant, hesitant now because I'm like I ain't having no youngsters like trying to disrespect me in it like go on your own journey but I know that's not the right thing to do but do you know what I mean but I think nowadays, like, my main mentors are people that are way out of the sport. I don't have no mentors in the sport because yes. it's a conflict of interest. So if I just to name a few, I'd say, obviously, Donovan been a big mentor to me, especially this past year. Um, Donovan Bailey, mm-hmm. then for Christie, um, Dwayne Chambers, um, who else? Darren Campbell, um, who else? I think those are the main guys I'd say that I actually, like, when I speak to them, are they giving me all of the gems that they had because there's no competition. Like they're, they're retired 20, 30 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever the case may be. And letting me know, okay, this is why I went wrong. This is why I went right. You need to think about this, blah, blah, blah. And it's just having that humility to listen and not think because I ran faster or whatever, you know, y- your opinion is not valid. Mm-hmm. So I just listen to everyone. But for me, I'm, maybe it's a bad thing, but I only tend to listen to people who, have either done what I want to do or have achieved more than me. I know that might not be a good thing because everyone's got something to give you. But I find it hard sometimes to listen to people and I'm like, do you get where I'm coming from? Yeah. But I think that's something, I know that's something I need to work on because I don't think that's the best mentality to have. But for the most part, I just try to, people who I really rate in a sport, I just reach out. If they get back to me, then we'll talk. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's the thing, right? You want to get... You want to be around people who have done something similar or trying to get there. And so yeah. that's just the way how life is, man. And it's not a bad thing. It's just like, yo, this is the season that you're in, right? Yeah, for real. I mean, when when I had been running well, right, for a good consistent time in my career. But when I started running really well, like when I ran 51, 651, yeah. and then sure. ran you know, out there, bro, it was 
it was different because it was just like, yo, I've been, I've been, I've been the same guy. I've been saying the same things. I've been doing the same things. So it's like, oh, now you guys want to ask for certain things, bro. There were people who thought that I was on stuff. I was like, Doug, if I was on <laughs> stuff, yeah, you know, I would have tried to drop a six three. Like, you know, if I was, like I would have took the good 100%. stuff. You know, 100%. but when you look back at certain experiences, right? One of the ones that you didn't do was you didn't go to that NCAA system. And a lot of people oh. might say, a lot of people might say, oh man, like, you know, it, 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 it worked out for you or it didn't. We don't know what certain things is worth it, OJ, until we reflect and we think back. When you look back at that time, do you regret not going through the NCAA system? A bit of me does, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like, even nowadays, when youngsters are talking to me, and they're like, what should I do? I'm like, yo, if you can go to America, go to America. Maybe the UK coaches might not like me saying that. <laughs> I'm saying, look, you get a free education. You're competing against the best young, young athletes in the world. Like, some of the winning times at those competitions are going to match our competitions over here. I'm like, you're going to be, and as well, the reason why I wish I did it is because you can, you can learn and fail in silence. Because you only hear about these guys when they start doing well, but you don't know about all the two seasons before when they were getting taking their licks. You, you ain't seen that. But with me, I was learning on the job in public. I'm learning in front of the BBC. I'm, I don't have no safe space to just figure it out. So I wish I could have had that. And as well, it's like... Bro, you complete the NCAA, you're ready for the pro world. Do you know what I mean? Like you've taken those learnings, your you've had your apprenticeship in those four years. So I, I wish I did, but at the same time, maybe I might have not survived that system. Maybe I might have got injured. Maybe I would not have made it to the top of the top of the top of the pile. Maybe I might have just faded out. Yeah. So it's hard to say. I know I was talented, but I don't know if I would have come out of the NCAA's running nine seven nine eight. I hope I would have, but I don't know. And I kind of don't have regrets because over on this side, I think I've had the best coaches in this country. So started with Jonas, um, Steve Fudge, Ryan Frecker, and like these guys, in my opinion, are the best coaches in the country. So I'm like, I had the best route possible yeah. to try and get it done in the UK. So if I hadn't had those, if I haven't worked with those guys, maybe I would have more regrets. And I'm like, you know what? I did it the best way I think I possibly could at this period of time. So, but, but if I could go back, maybe I would have, gone for a visit at least do you know what i mean because yeah. it's, it's a good system man it's it's and you just hit two things right there where you said you may not have ran those times bro it's it, it is a cutthroat system right yeah. because man like i've had coaches in my alabama coach i ain't even gonna say his name because it's, it's it ain't even i ain't gonna show that type of love like that but mm. it's so many things where it's my way or it's not Right. Yeah, yeah, and the it. system is the system. And they may say, bro, I have some great recruiters out there. Right. And that's what you're supposed to do. Recruit, try to get the best. But they don't have enough time to individualize certain plans because once the season yeah. starts, bro, it's 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 it's, it's going. Bang, bang, bang. It's going and it's every week. So you may not have ran the times that you thought that you would have. But the other thing about the system, too, when it does teach you, man, it's a blade. It, it, if you don't have that mental fortitude, you're going to get it. Because if you, you have to figure out that what was me stuff is not going to cut to figure out because you're going to take some L's. And yeah. the other thing, OJ, is, is and we're going to talk a little bit about um, the, the 2019, but there's yeah. another part of the sport where I don't feel like people talk about too much. Mm. It ain't always glitz and glamours. You don't always have the seasons where it feels good. You get into some things and you get into a point where you realize that, man, you may be talented, but there are other people who are way more talented. Just as talented or more, 100%. Tell you the story. Right? I remember in college, one of, one of the, the most talented guys I've been on, been with, DeAndre Basson. Bro, yeah, he got skills. We're doing Alabama relays my last year. I mean, you know, I'm having a decent year. You know, I'm running consistent 10 twos, 10 ones. I mean, decent year. And... I remember, well, we're having Alabama relays uh, senior year, last one, and we're running about three o'clock. And DeAndre comes in the room. He was my roommate. And he says, bro, I'm about to go to Krispy Kreme's. Krispy Kreme's is a donut spot, right? Yeah. He says, yo, I'm about to go get, yo, I'm about to go get a half a dozen donuts. I was like, Reggie, we run in like three hours, like three and a half hours. He was like, no, no. He's like, soft. I'm just going to go get some. Do you want anything? I'm like, no. You know what I'm saying? 
So I'm there, bro, making my oatmeal, adding my berries, dog, having my mm -hmm. cup of tea, doing all of the things that I know to help me get me dry. Man comes okay. down, washes off six donuts, bro. Washes them off quick. Glass of water, some milk. He's like, are you ready to go? I'm like, all right, all right. So I see in my mm -hmm. mind, dog, this guy, the stomach is going to be bubbling in about an hour. You're going to mm -hmm. have to make some decisions in the bathroom. I'm straight. Bro, we get to do the thing. He goes to use the bathroom as I knew it would. And we get to the line. And I'm feeling good. Wicked warm up. Body is firing. Knees are coming up. Explosive mm. block starts. It's time. <laughs> I'm in five. He's in six. Gun goes 50 meters down the track. Dog, I'm rolling. I'm like, yo, my next gear is right here, right now. My next gear doesn't come. But all I see is knees. DeAndre, oh DeAndre, you and DeAndre like the same height. DeAndre is six three, yeah, six three and a half or so. Yeah, he's got long, long legs. Bro, all I see is this man skating, and he crossed the line and he dipped and he ran like ten oh four. Jeez. People saw the time, but they don't know the man had half a dozen donuts about three mm. hours before. There mm. comes a time, OJ, where you compete in certain races in time, and that happened to me again when I raced Johan Blake. And he ran 982 on my head. And you think to yourself, bro, I've done, I'm doing all that I can, training as hard as I can, mm -hmm. can, everything that is in my possession to make it better. I'm doing everything possibly to get the result and it's still not coming. And you have a decision to make. Either you say, okay, this is where I'm at. I got to focus on this and I'm going to try to get better within my skill set. Or mm -hmm. You're like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. And that's it. Mm. So was there a time, OJ, when you were thinking to yourself, man, is this all worth it? Mm. I think the two times I've had that thought process was, like I said earlier, 2017, after the Nationals, when I just, I came fourth. But like, we had to come top two to make it to the Worlds. Yeah. Like CJ was having a brilliant year that year, 9-9 nine, nine, all over the place. So his third spot, third spot was already going to be for him. So it was a shootout between the rest of us. Whoever gets that top two, we're going to the world champs. And uh, I think Reese, our training partner at the time, Reese Prescott, he won, yeah. went on to make the final. So I seen that and I was obviously happy for him. But I thought, man, like if I had come top two, maybe I might have had a chance of that kind of success. And I think I finished that season and I was like, you know what? <sighs> am I good enough? Like, am I good enough? Because I'm doing everything I need to do in training. I'm with these guys in training and it's just not happening. And I moved coaches and then had my fastest year the season after. I think the second time that happened to me was probably this season, I'm not going to lie, this mm. season. Um, because I think I'd worked so hard to get back from 2021. I just expected, you know what, I've worked so hard, I deserve to just get all my goals now. I deserve to get everything because I've worked way too hard. And when I think it, I was like, man, I trained so hard. And it's not, it's not happening. But I think for me, like you said, there's two things, right? you can get that you can get disheartened when you know you've done everything in your power and it's not enough even at the age of 26 i still know i haven't had a season yet mm. where i've done i've been as fit as i can know i can be i've been technically smooth as much as i could like good start good transition good ending good mental um all of those things firing for a whole season has never happened and the only times they have happened it's been in flashes and that's kind of been my career, like fast races, won the British title, but never had a full summer of like, this is just dominance from start to finish. This guy is just killing it. So that's what's waking me up every day because I know I've got the tools to have that kind of year, but I'm, I know I'm in my own way because I'm like, okay, with you. are you overthinking? Are you not trying hard enough? Are you not listening? Like those kind of things. And I think, to be honest with you, that might be the story of my career. If I get out of my own way, I will achieve what I know I can. But I've never had, like I said, if I got to a point where I've done everything I can and it's not good enough, I would probably retire just how I am. But I know there's so much that I can I can do. Like, even when I'm in the gym now, like, I feel like I'm training well right now, like even lifting well. And I'm like, I ain't lifted like this in years. Like, I'm like, okay, these are, these are things that's going to add to potentially a better result. You know what I mean? I'm running as, as further as I've ever done. I'm feeling fit. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm feeling lean. I'm feeling strong. So I'm like, okay, well, let's see what happens when you try and get all of these things in unison at one time. And 
if that happens, I just, I, I just feel like I'm going to run nine seconds. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But if, but if that happens and it doesn't happen, I run like 10-1 or, or 10-0 or 10-2, then I might say, you know what? Maybe 10 maybe 10 4 was just as fast as I could go. Yeah. But because I just don't feel like it is because I know I've got so much more to do. So that's what, that's what my thing is right now. Do you know what I mean? Just knowing, have I done everything I can? And if I have, then I'll stop. But for now, I don't feel like I have. From a mental standpoint, AJ, how, how do you get out of your own head? What does that look like? Because we as athletes, man, you know, people who are can see long term, but they're focusing short term. You can see the potential, but we can fall in mm. love with the potential that we miss the reality, right? 100%. So it's like, yo, there's been times where I've been so mad at myself, where I'm mm. like, nah, what am I doing wrong? And I beat myself up, beat myself up. But I'm like, but what am I doing right? So how do you mm. get out of your own head to see the positive so you can yeah. move forward? Thing is with me, I've, I'm I'm a harsh critic of myself, so I I rarely ever look at things like okay, well I'm doing this well. Until recently, I'm always like, what am I what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? And I think, how do I get out of my own way? I'm I'm a very I'm a very I'm an overthinker, I'm very detailed. I like to be in control, and track is the opposite of all of those things. You're not in, you're never in control. If you think too much, you're going to be slower, and if you're too detailed you're not going to be free. Like, if we really take away myself, a 100-meter sprint is just, it's, a, it's, a, it's an instinctive expression. It has no thought to it. Well, you have to train yourself to where there's no thought to it. But you can't be on a start line thinking about the steps before they've happened. You can visualize, but you can't actively think and run at the same time. So for me, I've gone, sometimes I've gone down these deep holes of perfection. Like, the step needs to be like this in order for me to achieve my potential, rather than I'm good enough. And I just need to be good at one or two things and I will get my success. So even this year, I ain't seen one video of myself in mm. training. Mm. I'm usually someone that I'll be on videos for hours. I ain't seen one video of myself on purpose because I know if you give me a video, I'm going to go down a slope of this till 2 a.m. in the morning and I won't sleep. And also getting around coaching athletes that kind of just gets me out of my own head. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think sometimes, like I, I've had coaches over the years where they're as detailed as me and that makes it worse because we'll both just be looking at it like we need to make this perfect. Da, 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 da. And you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't bode for success. So now I'm like, you know what? Pick two or three things, spend the whole year working on that because you're good enough. All the fastest races I've done, I didn't think it was, it was a emotional thing. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to win the race. It was never... I'm going to execute my perfect technique. That's never happened and I've run fast. So why am I so fixated on it? It doesn't make no sense. So those are the kind of conversations I have with myself these days. I just be honest with yourself. You're thinking too much. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it, it, honestly, man, my best races came when I stopped trying to analyze the start and just when the gun goes, you go. You know. Just go with it. That's it, man. Because track and field is one of those things it, where if you think too much, you're done. It's not like well it's not like basketball where or soccer where you, you you can you can hide behind your team if you're not having a good night. Yeah, you got you have more time as well. It's like what a sixty minute game, ninety minute game. There's an element of there's a beauty in thinking because you've got to be tactical. With us, it's just be as strong, as powerful, as reactive, as fast as you can in nine seconds. And that's what you're judged off of. So it's weird because I'm like, I need to think about I need to think this through. I need to think this through. And it's like, no, you need to. This is the one period of my life where I'm like, no, don't think. Don't think mm. about it. Everything else, yeah, maybe. But with this, don't think about it. And, like, you know, and I'm going to see how it goes this year with, with that mentality. A lot of people don't self-assess and self-analyze that, like, man, I may be the problem. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because you see it so many 100%. times. It's like, oh, this coach is whack. He's not really feeling what I'm doing and this and that. But to self-analyze and to self-assess, you know, it, it's it, it it's an important part of every person's process. And as mm -hmm. someone who has been in the public eye, especially over in the UK, where you're watched a lot more, especially if you do a sport, right? Yeah. You are critiqued in a way where it makes you seem like, man, you don't want to get better. You don't want to progress. It's your fault. But as a man, OJ, who is on the track one sense right that's just a part of your life right there's mm -hmm. other parts of your life that make up you the person 
how do you block out the noise in order for you to know what you stand for, what you would like to achieve, and what you're trying to do as a man? We all have ambitions away from what we do. It's a small mm -hmm. part. It's not exactly who we are. But as your personal mm -hmm. development, when you hear something enough times, man, parts of you start to believe it a little bit. It starts to creep in a little bit. So yeah. at this stage now in your life, 26 years old, how do yeah. you navigate through what to listen to, what not to listen to, but also what you stand on? That's interesting. Like for me, um, like from a trap from a trap perspective, like I'll write goals down for the year. I'm like, okay, what do I need to do to make this work? What are the things that could not make it work? And then everything else that's not that, I'm just like, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I work with a psychologist and um, that's a lot of the things we work on, like just decluttering the mind, what what the things need to remain that are important. And if it's not, and what people need to be in that circle as well. So it's my coach, it's my agent, my psychologist, my therapist. If you're not, my, fam my friends and family, if you're not part of that, yeah, I can say, yeah, 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 thanks for that. But, you know, I just, it, it, it would, it'll brush off my skin. And I think... Um, like you said, self-assessment is a, is, a, is a very important thing. I think pride can get in the way of that because when you look yourself in the mirror, you know what the right or wrong thing is, right? And then pride comes in because you're like, well, if I admit that I'm not perfect yet or not good at this, it means that I'm not worthy enough to get to where I'm trying to go. And that's when the pride comes in. You want to convince yourself that that's not true. So I think a lot of it is just environment, man. Like trying to get myself around people that hold me accountable. Um, just being honest with me, you know, don't buy into my life. And um, I think as well, me doing things away from the track that sort of allow me to not take it too seriously. Like I'm very creative. Yeah. Um, you know, in the process of sort of working on a production company at the moment and a creative hub. And I'm just having fun doing that. And that keeps me like free, humble, all the good stuff. Do you know what I mean? So I think yeah. you got to be clear on like what it is you're trying to do, what's going to help you, what's not and block everything else out, to be honest, because it really doesn't matter. And, I'm, and I know I'm doing it for me. Do you know what I mean? I'm not really doing it for anyone else. So yeah. that's kind of where I'm at with it now. Yeah. I mean, you said a couple of things there, man. One one being uh, in the media space, trying to do other things. Uh, yeah. and, and that's the one thing that I learned in track, man. You know, when I talk to certain people in track, when I first started, man, they're like, yo, I want to do this till I'm like 40. I'm just like, really? That was, that was never my story, right? I didn't even... Uh, one of the biggest things, misconception people ask of me is whenever they ask about the Olympics, they're like, man, that must have been a dream. I'm like, no, it wasn't. I don't love track. I never have, you know. And it's one of those things, OJ, where when you aren't searching for other things, your value becomes in one thing. And one thing that you said that I think uh, is very important that we all should have is a therapist, right? Mm -hmm. But how did you get there, man? Because asking for help as a man is not an easy thing to do. So how did you get to the point where you're just like, yo, I got to figure out some things up here, but then to let your ego aside to go and actually ask for help? Does that come naturally for you? Do you know, <laughs> do you know it's so funny. Mm. I was actually talking about a physiotherapist, but, but mm. yeah, 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 I actually yeah. have, I actually have had a yeah. normal therapist as well. So I think this is the first time I'm actually going on camera to say I'm even in therapy now. Yeah. And uh, that's something I was like, like, no one knows that. So mm -hmm. it's funny that you just assumed it was that. But yeah, honestly, I think, um, how did I get to that point? I think <sighs> struggling mentally, to be honest. I think the pandemic highlighted it a lot. I was living by myself at the time and just like everything that, because sometimes track is track for me, was actually a distraction, I think, from my normal life. That's oh, what I realised. Yep. So when it stopped momentarily, all I was faced with was the reality of my life, like social, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, shit, I'm not happy, man. Like, I've got a lot of things I need to work on. <laughs> and um, that's what got me to therapy. Very, very depressed, a lot of anxiety. Again, still dealing with it right now. And um, I, yeah, do you know what? I was not, I was not even going to say that, but I think because you just assumed it was that. I was like, you know what? There's no point being say, lying and saying, oh, no, 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 it's my physio. Yeah, but you know um, what? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's because I'm out of the sport now where my mind doesn't even think about it the physiotherapist. I think yeah, about yeah. like, but you I'm know what, bro? It, it, 
you know, I was thinking about this the other day, um, you know, because a man asked me, you know, he was he was trying to get into the speaking space and he was like, yo, Akeem, like, bro, like you have you have this together, you have this and that. And I'm thinking to myself, bro, you you, you really couldn't no be clue. going farther from the truth because yeah. every time that you go and speak, you're opening up parts of you and it's reliving certain things that you haven't dealt with. And as men, bro, we suppress everything. Right. Bro. And so there are moments where I'm in training. I'm just like, dog, like, I don't even know how I'm going to get mind's not been here. And you're just, mm. you kind of go through the motions. And I remember, bro, in, in, in uh, 2000, 2015, the same year around 651, I've been mm. on the floor sleeping with the sheet because I didn't, I didn't get the contract coming out. I didn't have any money. My mom was helping me with the rent and then things got tight. And so I was just giving my roommate whatever I had, but I didn't have a bed for six months, right? Wow. And so I was on the ground, coming to training, yo, bro, I gotta murder it. And mm. how, how, how Stu found out that I didn't have a bed, I asked him a question, right? I'm like, yo, how, <laughs> how important <laughs> is it for recovery to have like a good bed, right? Like, what does that look like? And he was like, yo, it's very mm. important. Mm, yeah. yeah i'm like oh that makes sense and then things started to go where it's like yo he said to me one time he said Kim, when you leave training like your body is aligned and it's nice and it's and but then when you come back it's like you're out of whack i'm like yo i just didn't sleep good right but he didn't know the other side of it and so when we talk uh -huh. about therapy and we talk about opening up the toughness of a man bro there's a mm. lot of men that die in silence and I never want to get to the point where I let because I didn't speak up or have somebody to help me or to mm -hmm. listen to that I killed mm -hmm. myself in silence. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the fact that you're able to say, Todd, I need some help. Mm -hmm. I need to go and find and seek help, whether that's opening up to a friend or going and seeing someone professional. That's not going to judge you because the world judges a lot. You know what I'm saying? So what has been one of the biggest transitions for you that you've seen within yourself as you've been going to a therapist is it is it is it is it how you handle the voices a little bit more or is it the fact that like yo i've been through a lot in life early that i didn't know was going to come back at me yeah do you know what it is i think it's just like i'm still in that process so it's hard for me to say but even mm -hmm. just that because i was i've been on and off with it to be honest yeah so i feel like right now i'll probably say it's just more that awareness of like how your life life events play a part in how you think, feel, and behave. And then you only realize that when you mm, you don't behave the way you want to or you make mistakes, blah, 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 as everyone does. So there's that part of it. And I think as well, kind of like just, kind of just learning to not distract yourself. Mm. Like just sit with, sit with what you're feeling, sit with what's going on. And then, then as time goes on, you start to get like more emotional control more strategies, do you know what I mean? But I think even just like, like those of my friends even know that's what was going on. So even just telling them, yo, I was going through X, Y, Z. They're like, is it? I've never known. And I'm like, even just having that little community you now of people I can speak to, feeling like this today or blah, blah, blah. Like something I've literally never done in my whole life. But then I think you, you'll find, uh, you'll get to that brick wall and you're like, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I've got nowhere to turn now. And unfortunately, for a lot of guys, especially when they're in that situation, yeah, the show ends. So yeah. I feel like, yeah, I wasn't really trying to get to that position. So I was like, you know what? Something's got to give. I think now I'm on that journey. I'm realizing this track, this, this track thing I'm doing, just running in a straight line. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> like it's not that, it's not that complicated. I can't, I can't add that to my frustrations because there's real life stuff going on. So that's you know it's very funny because coming into this interview today, I did not think <laughs> I did not think we'd talk about that. But that's the only thing that's been on my mind recently, to be honest. I think it's probably contributed towards that lack of motivation. My mind's just been somewhere else. But I think my my agent said this the other day is like, you know, you're just in the fire right now. So you're not gonna know what this is for until you get the onto the other side of it. But mm -hmm. I think right now, because I'm so deep in just whatever this process is, um, find hard to see the benefit of it yet if i'm honest but i think maybe a year from now i'll be like okay cool i've not developed into xyz and then you can you can see the benefit of it man i had a coach tell me years ago i didn't really understand it i would have to have been like 
13, 14 years old, and I was playing football, and I didn't have any cleats, right? Uh, American football. Um, didn't have any cleats, right? And so I kept slipping. And he said, right. yo, he said, Keith, where's your, yo, Doc, where's your cleats? I'm like, yo, Regin, I don't, I don't need those. Like, the slip is part of my plan. But the reality was mm -hmm. I didn't have the money. Right? I couldn't afford it. And when he found that out, man, he said, come to my office the next day, man. And he came to the office and he had like these wicked pair of cleats on white Nikes. It was wicked. I said, yo, who's it those? He's like, yo, there's like, these are yours. I was like, bro, where I come from, man, people don't just give you things just to give it to you. Usually there's an attachment to it. And he looked at me and he said something to me that always stuck with me. He said, Akeem, man. The loneliest path that a person will take is thinking that you have to go through it alone. And he was like, there are people who don't want anything from you. They just want to see you do well. And so, but you don't know those things unless you open up and you actually share what the heck you're struggling with. Because we all struggle with things. It's just yeah. people hide in the struggle and then it goes and it grows. And then you realize until it's too late before you make a difference. But last question, OJ, man, as, 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 as you reflect back on your experiences, man, and you're getting a little bit older, still young in a lot of different ways, but age is age. When people see age, they equate it to certain things. And yeah, so. I look at it as growing old, older is a blessing, especially when you're in good health. We want to live mm -hmm. a long life. We want to live a long life, but things happen along the way. But for someone who may be walking the path that you're walking, man, you know, North London, everybody there coming up and just trying to navigate through life. They see one image, but they see another. What yeah. is a word of advice that you would give to someone who is trying to navigate the early adjustments, the transition, while feeling like everything is just boom, 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 boom fast paced? What is a message that you would share with that person? Um, I think the message would be to do your best to stay true to yourself. Um, know what you're good at and what you're not good at. And get around people who are going to get the best out of you. Mm. So if you've got those few things, like, yeah, you may not, you may not be guaranteed success, but you're, you're going to have some good equipment to try, to try and attempt it. These are things I think I wish I had earlier on. So now I'm starting to get those things. I'm like, actually, you know what? This kind of makes life a lot easier. So that's probably what I would say. Yeah, staying true to yourself, knowing what you can and can't do at the moment and um, getting around people that are going to just help you elevate. And that's really important. Oh, you got a lot, a lot going on, a lot going your way, man. What's the best way for people to keep in touch and to support? And what does, what does the support look like in this season, man? Because I think a lot of times yeah. people just look at it as, Oh, you know, it's 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 just liking the post or sharing the post, yeah. but maybe this tracks tracks a little different now. Maybe <laughs> it's passing the name to you know to 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 certain places that can work. What does support <laughs> look like for you, and what would be the best way that you need the support? Um, you know what I think, like you said, first thing you said, I think your social media is just my name on all platforms. That'd be a good way to keep up what I'm doing. And then I'd say support wise. Yeah, I guess yeah, I guess you could like a picture in it. That's what people do. You know, <laughs> drop me a message. Do you know what I mean? It's the little, it's the little things. Or if if you see, if you see me, yeah, just just chat. You know, I'm not gonna be unapproachable. I think most people think um, pro athletes just you can't speak to them. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm, hope, I'm open to a convo. I think that's probably what sport looks like. Real life conversations, I'd say. OJ, uh, uh, last question before we go, man. What, is 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 England winning the cup, or 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 what are we thinking? <laughs> Um, first game was good. Second game, even though it was a draw, I don't think it was good. I think semi-finals, man. I'm not gonna lie. Ah, uh, semi, you know, semi or quarter. I can't see that. I can't see it going the whole way. I can't. Who you got taking it? Can't. Um, I was gonna go for Spain or Argentina. Mm. I think they're they're looking. The last Argentina game the other day was pretty that good. They had some good quality, and Spain have been Spain have been pretty solid as well. I think those two. I'm leaning towards right now. OJ, appreciate your time, man. Um, I appreciate no worries, you jumping man. on it for all that you shared. Like, I still remember, you know, when I first saw you, probably were like maybe 18, 19, maybe 20. Yeah. And yeah, very young, still very raw. But the look of, you know, this is a lot, right? And I know that look because I've, I've been that look, you mm -hmm. know. So to see where you are today, man, is a good testament of your progress. And appreciate it, bro. in the midst of, 
everything trying to make you like the world, man. Just never lose sight of yourself, bro. And uh, what I learned in doing that is it's going to take a lot longer for things to come together. But when it does, you'll be grateful that you didn't compromise who you are. So stay in it, bro. As always, man, it, bro. I'm a person that, you know, I'm here whenever, bro. You know me. Ain't nothing changing me. So if I can help with anything, it, don't hesitate to reach out, bro. Appreciate you, bro. It's love. I'm going to be in touch. I'm trying to run 651, so I'm going to message him and ask, how, <laughs> ask him how you did that. Hey, so if, if, get better at this season. if, you know, I ran 651, I didn't go sub 10. I know if you run 651, you're going to go 9, 8 at least. That's, that's, what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying, I'm trying to get the 60 right, but we'll see. I'm racing in like maybe six weeks, so we'll see where it's at. We'll see where it's at. Bro, hit me anytime, bro. Yeah, no, I will. I will. I will. All right, man. Love, love.